Hello again, I'm still licensed massage therapist Paul Kokody, and in this video I will be talking about one of the most important areas of the body for receiving massage body work, but it tends to be one of the most neglected, and that is the pelvis. Here I have a female pelvic model that I will use to help illustrate uh, a few things through the video. Now this video will be mostly talking about general issues that can help both sexes uh, for a variety of issues that you just don't realize massage can be used for helping out. I will have a separate video for just talking about the benefits of pelvic massage for helping out the various sexual re reproductive issues for both sexes. But this video, I'm trying to keep it general because I'm trying to figure out ways to make it shorter. Now, uh, for doing massage body work for the pelvis, most of what I do is external for techniques. I do have the knowledge and understanding how to do internal techniques. It's just a very gray area when it comes to massage. For the vast majority of my clients, the external techniques are more than profound enough uh, for helping out uh, with people's modesty levels. I'm in the Chicago area in Illinois. It's a very liberal state for saying what we can and cannot do for massage. In fact, there really isn't any uh, definition of what areas we can and cannot work with. It's really all now about the definition of if it fits uh, the definition of massage as a therapeutic manipulation of the soft tissue, then I can do it. But like I said, most of what I do is ex external for techniques. It's unfortunate that the pelvis is such a neglected area because it's just so important. There's so many conditions that we can help out as you will learn from this video. For my clients, I try to make sure that my clients understand that they are in complete control of the session. I try to do everything to their comfort level. I'm here to offer my knowledge, my understanding, and my experience and my hands for helping you get better I give you the information and leave it up to you to decide what we do. Now, let's get on, get on to the pelvis. You, what is the importance of the pelvic work? Why do we need to do anything to it? Yogis and martial artists uh, probably understand this. Your pelvis is your structural center to your body. It is what provides support for your, your torso, your whole upper body. It provides balance really through the entire body, including the legs, because it affects how you stand on your legs. And then also it transfers energy between your upper and lower body as you walk or run or for golfers and tennis players swing your way through life. It affects the energy transference through the body and also its alignment, its balance affects your momentum and how you generate that energy. So one of the main areas of the body that are talk, talked about the pelvis for key importance is in the back. It's the base of your spine in between the two hip bones called the sacrum. It's a couple levels of the spine that fuse together by I think the 20s. So this is pretty much the main element of stability in your body. It's often referred to as the keystone, which refers to the top stone of an archway of a stone archway. When it's nice and balanced, then that archway is nice and strong. And it's why there's Roman aqueducts that are still standing many centuries later. They understood good architecture and engineering for building these structures. Your sacrum pretty much is that keystone. You know, when your sacrum is nice and level, you have the stability, you have the balance, and you're able to most optimally transfer energy through your pelvis. When there's misalignment here, then the bones, the ligaments aren't supporting you as well. So you have to start recruiting muscles to start doing the job of the, the pelvis and the ligaments. So then when that happens, the muscles have to tighten up and provide extra support for the structure instead of doing their job to help create movement and as those muscles lock up tighter, then they crush you deeper into any instability, which creates uneven pressure for your lumbar spine, more uneven pressure on your disc to help feed bulging disc herniations, and also create pressure on nerves. So 
right there there's a big one big key importance of getting pelvic work is to help provide a more stable foundation for that and i've actually had clients where their mris confirmed there was a reversal of de degeneration by getting this work done but now the sacrum as important as it, it is for stability it does not work on its own for creating the stability and directing momentum and everything for the body in the front of the pelvis where the two hip bones come together this is called the pubic joint or the pubic symphysis where the back is about stability your front heavily impacts the momentum of your body because as i believe there are so many muscles that originate here or cross nearby that any way it's distorted affects all those muscles and the various bands of tissues that go out from there I honestly cannot think of anybody that has that same kind of musc musculature going out in every which direction. You have muscles that go down to your legs. You have musculature that comes underneath through the sling of muscles, what I like to call the undercarriage. It's uh, usually called the pelvic floor muscles. Those extend underneath and attach onto the sacrum and blend into your spinal muscles going up your backside. You have your abdominal muscles that extend upward as well as oblique or diagonal muscles that wrap around that tie into other tissue and muscles that connect onto your shoulder blades and the back of your head and neck. So anyway, this is distorted, pulls on all those muscles to affect alignment, but also affect how those muscles function. So what I talked about, uh, or what I'm about to talk about, you know, this plays heavily into habits. So, you know, what's the biggest thing that impacts our body for helping us be balanced? It's not really injuries. It's not really pregnancies, although those do have an impact, but those are not universal that applies to everyone. What applies to everyone that everyone fights for getting better is our habits. In particular, our asymmetrical habits, because those create uneven pressure on the pelvis, affecting the stability and how it can uh, create and direct momentum. Those asymmetrical habits are leaning to one side, whether you're sitting on one hip or being rolled onto one hip, or always leaning to one side, or in the case of sleeping, it's side sleeping, in particular if you always side sleep on the same side. What happens down in the pelvis is whatever side you lean to, that hip gets tucked under, pressed underneath the pelvis into the pelvic floor musculature. So it distorts the, the pubic joint in the front. It distorts the SI joint, the sacroiliac joint between that hip and the sacrum. And that hip joint will get collapsed under, the hip bone will get collapsed under and then all this tissue starts to tighten up just as it does anywhere else in the body. As that tissue tightens up, then it prevents the hips from coming back into balance and keeps you distorted. So there your stability is compromised, your balance is com compromised, leg lengths are, th are thrown off, uneven pressure in your discs and your spine is created. And then also all the various organs down here in your pelvis are bound into that tightness so, so you can get urinary issues, reproductive issues, and elimination, defecation issues, what I like to call the poo factor, all that gets affected. But besides those organs being affected, there's another really important system that is affected in the body and that is your nervous system. And that's because in the back of the pelvis you have the sacrum and you, you have your spinal cord that comes down through the spinal canal, through the spine. And you have these supporting structures around it called the meninges. Those meninges actually come all the way down. The outer sleeve that surrounds your brain and your spinal cord, I talk about it in my craniosacral video. It helps to keep your nervous system, your central nervous system separated from the rest of your body and it helps to keep the fluid in around your brain and spine, it goes down to the sacrum and attaches here. This is the tissue that you actually feel your headaches at because your brain has no perception of pain and also the deep back aches. It's in this outer sleeve called the dura mater. Anyway, you're distorted down here, pulls on that dura mater to create deep back pain 
or actually can pull up into your head to help feed headaches and migraines. In fact, all my headaches and migraines clients, I really have to do pelvic work to create the most longest lasting you know, and profound changes possible. But yeah, besides the, creating pressure on the brain or creating headaches, it can also distort your skull to help feed TMJ issues and possible vertigo tinnitus problems and even some uh, visual problems or eye strain and even some sinus pressure. Crazy as it is, I've actually done pelvic floor work and had feedback that it helped release people's sinuses. But anyway, that's the outer sleeve and then the skin of your brain actually continues down as a string that goes all the way down to your tailbone. If it was not there, then every time you bent over and stood up, your spinal cord would bunch up. So you have this string that goes all the way down to your tailbone to help anchor your spinal cord down through your spine. And because of that, any tailbone injuries, any distortion in your pelvic floor distorting your tailbone actually has a direct effect on the skin of your brain. So very important system. A lot of people don't realize pelvic work helps with headaches, migraines, but it does. And indirectly, women with cesarean scars or actually any abdominal scars low in the abdomen, the cesarean scars pull into the uterus down through the lady parts in through the pelvic floor and up through the spine. I've actually had more than one woman where I had to work on her cesarean scars to help her out with the severity of her headaches and migraines. So there's a major thing for the nervous system that is benefited. And also the sciatic nerve, if it gets pinched from all the tightness here, then you get sciatic pain. The pudendal nerve that supplies your pelvic floor can get pinched to affect re sexual reproductive issues and affect the external orifices for urinary stuff and defecation or the poo factor. So a variety of issues that are neurological that get affected by pelvic floor imbalances. Besides that, I already talked a little bit about the organs. If your bladder is too bound to the sides of your pelvic bowl or the intestines are bound too much to the top, then from, usually from like slouching or from children being in here, then the bladder cannot expand and you have frequency issues. If the pelvic floor is distorted and the sphincters are distorted, then you can have incontinence issues from uh, pressure leakage because you cannot get a good seal down here. So urinary stuff is affected by the pelvis being out of balance. The sexual parts, I'll skip for this uh, um, because that can be a video of, it, of its own. Already hinted at the defecation and elimination poo factor. If the anus is distorted, then that can affect how you can uh, eliminate uh, fecal matter, aka your poo. So, already I've talked about so many different conditions that are affected. Chances are you can relate to some part of this, or you have loved ones that do. And just think, this just is not talked about for massage to help you for these conditions, or many of them. You might have heard of like some stuff for like the disc issues, but these other issues, it's just not talked about. In allopathic medicine, all it really knows to do is to prescribe or cut you to do stuff or to put mesh in here, which uh, sometimes a prolapsing is just from tightness down in the pelvic floor pulling parts down into it. So, so many things that can be helped out. Uh, this video, I'm skipping talking about techniques because already it's long enough, uh, about 15 minutes already. So, uh, you know, I'm not talking about techniques, plus they vary person to person and session to session. So, I'll skip those. Uh, another video, please stay tuned. The next video I'll, I do will be on sexual reproductive uh, health issues that are helped by pelvic work. Please contact me if you have any, any questions, and I look forward to helping you in any way possible. Bye.